a little minute or so to let other people come on in so we can get started. I'm excited about today's topic today. Yay. Getting some, getting some of this beautiful energy. Hello, E-Queen. Hello. Ladies and gents, hello, hello. You know, like I said, I like to, let me see if I can find a little song, a little song, a little song, a song to play for us while we waiting. See, now why am I saying that song? No, I don't even care for that song too much. <laughs> oh, this is my joint right here. You know, this song is so good for what we're about to get into today, y'all. Today, February 1st, known as the first day of Black History Month here in the States. Also, if you are of the tradition, the Celtic tradition, the Irish culture, this is the day known as Embolk, which is a feast day. So let's get into it. Let's start with, the, uh, um, let's start with my introductions. Hello, beautiful people. This is your friend, your girl, Tahiri Divine the student and the teacher where we come to here to go into the shadows of our soul to remember that we are the light, right? So today we are talking about the goddess Bridget and her day, which is today, actually February 1st, the evening of the 1st going into the 2nd of February is known as her day, her feast day of Imbolc. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the history of the goddess Bridget and her story, her mythos and how she has came into our present time because this is this is her time this is her energy so we have to get it on a poppin so for those who don't know who goddess bridget is she is a celtic moorish goddess um so she's a celtic tradition which is the ireland irish tradition what was news to me as i was learning more about her some over uh, over some time now is that she was actually perceived or a black woman of course, we understand history or her story has been whitewashed um, or let's say her representation has been given of a more paler representation for the, the current inhabitants of the area to relate to her. And you know, nothing wrong with that. I don't have no faux pas with that, but it's always good to go back to what the original was. And she is and was an indigenous black woman. OK, so the goddess Bridget is the goddess of the eternal flame. What does that mean? So she is the goddess that reminds us that our light, our soul is forever burning and that in order to have our life and have our being is to continue to tap into our primal energy, our soul purpose, our soul life, our soul energy. So she is known to bring to be the um, the median between darkness and light. And this is why her feast day falls around this time, which is right smack dab between the winter solstice and the spring solstice. So she reminds us that we, even we're going through our own darkness, there is always light at the end. And that darkness is a maturation stage. It's a part of our journey. It's a part of life cycles. We talk about a lot about cycles, the goddess path, the feminine or energy is all about cycles. So she is that in-between cycle when you're not really in your past but you're not fully embodied your your new self you're like in that in-between stage and so when we get there there are times when we start to feel discouraged or we get nervous we get afraid or we start to have doubts and that is in the moment where we remember god is bridget who i like her name even the name bridget you hear the word bridge that there's always a bridge to the other side and the only thing that connects you to your past is your memories so she is here to remind us to stay um uh, completely and wholly into the present moment and allow our soul to be fully embodied. I love it about her. Hey, beautiful Raven. I see you. I see you. So in bulk, the, the term in bulk represents is actually, um, it means milk. And we know milk to be what a mother gives her child. She's also the goddess of compassion. Her other um, epithets or other goddess energy that represents her is Quan Yin, the goddess of compassion. She's also a love goddess, a, a, a fertility goddess as well. So after the uh, rise of Christianity, more so the Catholic, the Catholic Church, 
um, became take over Ireland. What happened during that time was a lot of the gods and goddesses, main so the goddesses of that era, were either if they could, if the Catholic Church couldn't really uh, eradicate them because the people were so ingrained into the culture of their um, goddess worship that that the, what the Catholic Church did is to get to get the people to convert, they would start changing the gods and goddesses into saints. So Goddess Bridget became Saint Bridget. Now there is a history later in around 480, um, or it'll be more so 450 BC. There was a woman by the name of Bridget that was born in Ireland, and she later became a saint of the Catholic Church. It is believed that Saint Bridget is a human incarnate of the goddess Bridget, and she came at that specific time during the rise of the Catholic Church to convert, not to convert, let me, let me say that, to infiltrate, let's say that, to infiltrate the um, Catholic Church to create a woman's learning center and she's actually revered in Ireland there's a shrine to her more so to the goddess Bridget the, the, the original shrine of the goddess Bridget is in Kildare um, Ireland and that place is known as the eternal flame where they would the priestesses of the age of the goddess Bridget's high heydays where the priestesses would gather and they would practice their ancient practices they would keep this fire going as a representation of the goddess so what St. Bridget did in 480 um, CE, AD, however you want to describe that time after Christ, what she did was go into that area and she turned it into a sacred place where it became a birth center or a learning center for women religious rights. So they were, um, and, and, and putting on my mytho, mythos hat, I do believe that St. Bridget of that day was the goddess incarnate Bridget. Um, it's interesting because she actually ended up dying on in bulk um, and then her protege ended up dying the following year on in bulk which is February 1st so in bulk actually means milk and again I see milk represents what the women do for our first we nurture something and because the goddess Bridget is a fertility goddess the milk that comes from her body nurtures is compassion and also too because there's a connection to that heart chakra a lot of people don't know that but it's actually the heart that actually creates the milk um, in the breast when a woman is lactating it comes from the heart, actually. So um, it just goes to show us a representation in a physical form, how the body is energetically connected to the spiritual nature of ourselves represents in the physical nature. But um, so, so in honoring her today, this is a really good time to declutter your home, your space, because it's all about being connected to the body. It's all about being connected to your soul. And so for me, um, I knew this day was coming up, but I didn't recognize I was doing, I was already in alignment with it. I was doing a lot of cleaning, a lot of decluttering, getting rid of a lot of my winter stuff from previous seasons that I can't fit no more. Um, washing all the sheets, changing, just getting rid of stuff. I had a lot of junk, getting rid of a lot of stuff and just really welcoming this newness energy and, and also reminding myself, because we all feel like this, we start having feelings of doubts because I'm doing some new changes in, in, my, in, my, in my life, y'all. A lot of new changes and then and doubts starts to creep in. So I really love that we have the goddess Bridget or St. Bridget's energy to remind us to stay present in our soul and to recognize that death is part of the journey. Some things, a lot of things, everything dies and death is not an end of anything. It is a new beginning because when we leave this death season of the winter, we go into spring, which is a sprouting of a new. And we have to be in this incubation phase. We have to be in this dark place to really face all parts of ourselves because in the darkness is really where we are the light. You know what makes me, in the darkness is the light. Y'all remember that song by the So Weird show that used to come on Disney Channel? Um, I used to love that show, but I like with Molly Phillips, she was singing that song. In the darkness is the light. Some something, something wins the fight. But yeah, I, I really love that show. But anywho, but that just really comes into what this energies are really about. So to honor her, you can declutter your home. Honor her by writing a gratitude list. You honor her in yourself by really connecting with your soul. What is it that your soul is revealing to you? What areas need to, you need to allow to die off? What areas do you need to nurture? 
What part of yourself needs to be more nurtured? Is it your body needs to be nurtured? Do you need to sleep more? Do you need to eat better? Do you need to start working out and moving? Do you need to buy some new clothes because you lost some weight because you gained some weight? You know what I'm saying? What is it for you that is in this transitional time frame that you need to recalibrate and remember that death is part of your cycle? It is a beautiful cycle because you know what? In order to experience the fullness of ourselves, we have to let go of what no longer serves us, whether that is relationships, whether it is um, connections to people. Maybe it's a job that you need to be letting go of. You're feeling nervous, like, oh my God, all my life I did this. What am I supposed to do? No, I'm midlife. Don't you know, um, I think it's J.R. Tolkien. I think she was in her 40s when she wrote, um, was it Harry Potter? Or that's J.K. Rowling. Rowling? J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter. I think she was in her 40s, right, when she wrote that book. So it's like, never count yourself out. Oh, let's Louise Hayes. I love her. Louise Hayes was in her 50s going into her 60s when she had her spiritual awakening and she created her Louis, um, Louise Hayes Foundation. Hey, girl, I just started my break from reading my alchemy book, learning about the three essentials in feminine energy. Exactly. And that's why I say feminine energy as women is so important that we're tapping into that because a lot of us are so disconnected whether it be our cultural society, religion, whatever it may be, family, we're so disconnected to the from the feminine nature of our divine selves. It's so beautiful that we start to reconnect and, re and redirect ourselves into that journey. And if you guys haven't known, which I don't know where you've been, but this week is the last week to register for the Dark Mother Mystery Initiate class. The links are in my description. If you ladies are ready to up level yourself and truly understand what does the dark path really mean? What is, how do I maneuver in my own darkness? What does it mean to be part of the dark mothers and be called by her because I'm scared or I'm nervous, whatever that is. If you are ready to leap into that part of yourself and really deep dive into the descent of your own underworld, definitely sign up for this class. The last week to sign up. I'm going to register on Friday. That part. This Friday. Or Saturday. Saturday is the last day to register. So February 6th is the last day to register. So make sure you guys get in the building. Because I'm closing the gates. Okay. The chambers are open. Cool. I'm going to look into that. Yes. I'm so, so honored to be bringing this information. Some mysteries. These are things that you're not going to find on the internet, ladies and gents. But that's good. Because you know what I learned? I was part in the beginning of my journey. I was like, you know what? All information needs to be revealed, which it is in a lot of ways. But at the same time, there's things that need to be kept within circles and groups because not everybody can handle information. And not, ev not all information is for everybody. And that is okay too. So if you are called into this this darker energy called to go into your own underworld or to know more of the underworld and the cycles of the divine feminine and her psychology this is what the dark initiate mother class is about and this is a really good uh, prerequisite class to start with because we are opening back the emergence temple ladies and ladies ladies i am reopening the emergence temple this spring so it will be in april we'll be reopening a totally new format a totally new way of doing things but it's a great way of doing things i learned so much the first time the first round and i, I just want to thank you all my alumni that was part of it i think we had a great time it was a great building process a great learning process for us a great way to expand but we are taking up the notch i'm so excited to have these um, guest teachers that will be coming in. You'll be getting some inside workings with some of my own personal mentors that you do not find on social media because none of them are on social media like that. And I'm so honored that they are, are going to be in coming a part of my emergence temple where you guys can really learn from the master teachers themselves. Of course, myself and these wonderful, powerful women. Okay powerful women so i'm excited that that will be relaunching in april so more information on that will be coming up but right now the registration for the dark mother initiate class will be up till this saturday definitely get on that i am so excited to talk about this um, energy with you all and share but uh, let's recap on what we're talking about today we're honoring the goddess bridget also known as saint bridget by the catholic church or the celtic um um ireland irish um culture so just again, this is her day to remind yourself that although you may be in a dark period, remember your inner light is what's going to lead you where you need to go. And there's always light at the end of the tunnel. There's always dawn that comes after dusk. So don't allow that to be 
a, a reason to feel why you can't move forward. Doubt may come in, but stay hold of yourself, take hold, care for yourself, have compassion for yourself because it's so important to give yourself compassion when you are going through the dark descent of yourself because in the darkness is truly where you're going to find your light. But that is all I have for today. I look forward for some more announcements for this week. Y'all know all month long, we'll be going into Black Her Story Month. So I'll be featuring Black Indigenous women from Mythos and of course from Her Story or what we know as history. I'll be sharing that. So you guys can go to TahiriDivine.com to learn a little bit more about the goddess Bridget and some of her history, as well as other goddesses and gods and women of the of, of Indigenous backgrounds who have really been out of the forefront and we need to love we need to know what's going on what's this is our story and we need to know it okay that is all for today i look forward to coming back to you guys later this is your friend your girl the student and the teacher to hear divine you can find me on all my social sites as to hear divine until next time love you peace to you and remember you are the light bye guys <laughs>